Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I will uh, just start off. It's a Stephen Reche, Ontario's Minister of Education, and I'm uh, very pleased that you've uh, joined the call. I want to first off say that uh, our government continues to be focused on negotiating a deal with the teacher unions that keep them in class. Our commitment is that students have a um, is that students have a um, access to education in the province of Ontario that they're able to be in class in a safe learning environment that is uh, keeping them focused on the subject matter at hand, and it's our commitment to do that. We just do not believe that they should be in the middle of this debate, nor do we believe that parents and students should be uh, losing um, class time, educational time, because the teacher union leaders decide to strike against our government and escalate against every government going back for the last 30 years. With uh, this negotiation, we have confirmed that we are going to maintain the lowest classroom sizes in Canada for the early years. We have committed to um, um, for maintaining full-day kindergarten. We have committed to ensuring that, um, that, uh, that we maintain a 1% compensation uh, increase for educators, a fair increase which we believe is the right thing to do. Uh, we are, in this negotiation, ensuring that we are investing more in special education than ever before and hiring more supports, more EAs, more resources to help those kids succeed. Uh, in this negotiation, we're fighting to ensure that uh, merit and qualification is the guiding principles of uh, hiring of new teachers, not seniority in the union. Uh, these are the important items we're fighting for. We want to make sure that students are in the driver's seat when it comes to our education system, not the teacher unions. And we expect better from the system. We expect better for our kids. And we want to continue investing more, but expecting more from the system so it serves our students better. Uh, and we're continuing to make our, a case that we have to help modernize the system. We have to give young people the uh, skills, the competencies, and the confidence to go through learning with, with the, they can get access to a good paying job and have all the knowledge they need to compete in a, a very uh, changing, competitive global landscape. To help them do that, we're investing in a four-year math strategy because under the former Liberal government, we saw math scores plummet. Uh, the majority of math students were not passing or meeting the provincial average. That is unacceptable. We accept better. We've announced a 200 four year math, $200 million four-year math strategy to help lift scores. That's going to make a difference. We have announced that Discovery Math, the liberal form of teaching, will end. And we're introducing a new curriculum this spring, which is being updated as we speak, and will be in classrooms in September of 2020. We're ensuring financial literacy is now mandated in the elementary and high school uh, uh, experience. We're ensuring financial literacy is a mandate of education in Ontario. We are uh, putting a heavy emphasis on STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. And of course, we're encouraging more young people to pursue the skill trades. We believe that there are great, uh, dignified, well-paying jobs. Uh, in addition, we are, uh, I think, uh, making a fairly important uh, transformation to support mental health in schools, uh, dub more than double the funding. We think these kids deserve support and, um, and the resources, and we're doing that, the highest investments ever recorded uh, in mental health. So we're putting a strong emphasis on math. We are ensuring our kids remain safe through a physical health education curriculum to make safety for our children from bullying to cyberbullying to human trafficking to concussion safety. All of these things are central to the safety of our children. We take that as a, a paramount priority. But we're also ensuring that our kids have the best curriculums, uh, good schools. That's why we're investing $500 million of this year alone to build new schools and expand existing schools. So we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to invest, but we're also going to continue to say that the teachers
teacher union leaders uh, should not be demanding higher compensation, higher benefits, higher wages, higher entitlements for their members, respectfully, when they make, in on average, for a high school teacher, OSSTF, about $92,000 a year. And they've got, you know, very generous benefits and one of the best pensions in the nation. And all I'm saying is we're offering a reasonable increase. And I think it's fair um, that they accept that increase and not continue striking uh, because they're not getting a higher wage or a higher benefit from the government. That's unfair to students. And in the, me- in the meantime, while we focus on getting a deal, we're going to put money on the table to support parents, uh, to help them with child care, up to $60 per day. And they could, uh, as of today, over 600,000 people have signed up it's for our support for parents initiative, and it's going to help. It's going to help put, a, put some money in the pockets of working people in Ontario, and they deserve that support. So with that, I will turn it back over, and obviously, I'm uh, happy to take a few questions. Okay, next we have Shazia Malik, who is now with E of I. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Minister. Um, my question is that uh, uh, you are saying that the uh, teachers are asking for a higher wage, but when we talk to a couple of teachers, they said that this is not really an issue. Maybe it is part of the issue, but not really mainly. What we are asking the government is to reduce the class size because that is putting a lot of stress on the teachers. They cannot monitor them properly. So is that true? And you have really negotiated and fought very hard. So my understanding is, or if you can give us an idea, will that issue be resolved soon? Yeah, the teacher compensation has always been an issue for every teacher union. The presidents of the teacher unions are essentially politicians that have to be elected. They want and they will fight for higher wages, higher benefits, higher entitlements. They don't want any changes to sick leave, to the issue around absenteeism. You know, we spend $650 million a year of your money on absenteeism. For folks who are taking days off on Fridays or on other days that are problematic, and then school boards have to find, last minute, they have to find supply teaching. It costs you money. We're trying to strengthen the system, the integrity of the system. We're trying to say, if you're going to take an extended leave up to 120 days, a 90% pay, we expect a doctor's note. And the teachers' union don't want that. They don't want us to hire teachers based on the quality of their knowledge, based on the knowledge they have related to the subject matter. You know, having mathematic-focused education, a background to teach a math course. They don't want that. They want it based on union seniority. And yes, indeed, they want higher benefits, higher pay. Uh, you know, I respect the, the, what those individual teachers are telling me, but their union leaders, be under no illusion, have made it clear they want higher wages for their members. Now, these folks make a roughly $92,000 a year for a high school teacher. They're the second highest paid in Canada. After 10 years of work, they're the highest paid in Canada. We spent over 80 cents a dollar in education on compensation. Like folks, we've got to put students in the driver's seat. 80, over 80 cents, or 83 cents per dollar goes to compensation. And by the way, since 2003-04, we've had a, we have 10% more teachers in schools and less than 1% more students. So that seems to be inconsistent with reality, we're putting more resources. And to your point about more support in schools and classrooms, I want to maintain low classroom sizes. I am committed to maintaining low classroom sizes. Under our plan, we will maintain low classroom sizes. We will have the lowest classroom size in Canada for elementary, uh, for, the, for the early years of learning. In fact, under our plan, we're protecting the sustainability of full-day kindergarten in our schools. We are committed to it. It works for our, for our kindergarten kids. So, you know, we're going to continue to make that case. And I know that the teacher unions want to make it about that. But let's be under no illusions. For 30 years, they have fought for higher wages, higher benefits. uh, And that's fine. That's their role. But mine is to stand up for the taxpayer. To say, yes, I'm prepared to spend more in education. But to build more schools. To hire more math teachers. To provide more mental health support. Not to increase pay for people who objectively make high income in the public service. And I think that's a fair position and 
one that the people of Ontario want me to uh, defend in this negotiation. But I'm committed fully to getting a deal. I'm doubling my, redoubling my efforts. I need the teacher union to agree to private mediation. They should have accepted it months ago when I called on them to do so in November. And I'm urging them today to do the right thing, work with the government, let's get a deal that keeps kids in class. Thank you.